and we're live this is episode right. number two of the Hello, coder kids the podcast coder kids podcast <laughs> where we both welcome you at the same time <laughs> yes this is gonna be great yes, that is good now if you're following along last week we were in the same room the room i'm and still in week, that's right and this week i am in utah and james in houston that's right that is considered a, a broad so, to coder kids but um there you go yep yeah, definitely outside of the metro area. I guess James, you're uh, getting ready for the big hurricane. The what category one? <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of rain at least, right? Yeah, I I took I took uh, my son out in it today with our giant rainbow umbrella, and he was he was loving that until it started raining really hard, and we started freaking out. <laughs> we went right back yeah. inside the house. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Well. Um, so in this podcast, I guess we, we uh, forgot to kind of give the intro, but I'm Jeff Ward, uh, the owner of Coder Kids. And uh, in this podcast, we're going to talk about uh, our business. We're going to talk about the different classes that we offer and just some different elements of kids coding that, that are, that's interesting. Kids coding, gaming, technology, um, all those things that, that might be interesting. Yeah. You want, Absolutely. You want to introduce yourself real quick, James? Yeah. I, mean, I know that. I yeah. Don't know if it's appropriate to do this every episode, I guess it probably is. Right? Well, for episode number two, perhaps. I think episode number three, it's like, well, if you made it this far, folks, you know, <laughs> made it through like over an yeah. hour of, of two bald dudes chatting with each other. Uh, yeah. So I would say I'm James Thornock. I, I, you know, effectively run Coder Kids. Um, Jeff does a great job supporting me with the website and, and, um, you know, really making classes able to happen. And then it's my job to find instructors and write curriculum and do all of that to make sure that camps and classes are just premium quality. So, you know, we're gearing up for the fall. Um, uh, you'll see, um, all of our fall classes, say 95% of them are online right now. You can now search by tag. There are lots of cool features that we're adding to the website all the time to make it a little bit easier to find and navigate classes. Um, yeah, find what you need. So that's what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm doing all day, every day, and I try to take Sundays off, you know, when I can. But um, yeah, that's basically yeah. it. You think you'll take? You think you'll take tomorrow off? Yeah, yeah. We've we've prepared well for for the coming week. So that's good. Um, well, James, what what's new with you uh, down there in Houston, other than the the Category One hurricane? Well, my brother in law is uh, kind of switching jobs right now. Fortunately, he does have a a job lined up, which you know he's grateful for because that's not always the case for everybody. Um, and he decided to stop back home in Houston, so we've been uh, playing board games in the evenings, and and uh, there's this there's this game called Concept that's a lot of fun and uh so so that's a plug that's, that's it's not sponsored been up to. yeah this is not a sponsored but, episode well, we hope we <laughs> hope it will be sponsored by coder kids maybe, yeah maybe if concept hears about this they'll uh they'll Ret retroactively <laughs> when this is a big deal in, <laughs> in like a week to... yeah yep uh, we don't have a sponsor for the podcast, so if you're out there listening, um, we would love to to ha have you as a sponsor. Right. These Thanks are for your true consideration. These are our true opinions, and they'd still be our opinions even if we did have a sponsor. I like the game concept. So, um, well, yeah. James, so that's what I've been doing. You, yeah, I will tell you, I've had a busy week. Um, you know, last Friday. I was with James in his house making podcast episode number one. Mm -hmm. Then I got a truck and people helped me load it up. Drove all the way back here to Utah. Yeah. That was a doozy. If you've driven a 26 foot U Haul, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 1,700 yeah. miles. I more or less helped you move that. I wasn't very helpful with the piano. Um, Except uh, I did. You, I mean, I did get the, the straps. I, mean, I got the straps. You know, so that's what. You're the third man. We couldn't have done it without you. That's um, true. At least two and so a half anyway, men. 
I'm here now in the new house and unfortunately, well, we're moving, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a big, a lot to do. And also this house is a four bed, three bath, but three of the bedrooms we're like ripping out. So, whoa, it's, uh, we're basically living in one bedroom for the next couple of weeks while we figure out, while we, while we finish those three bedrooms, but it'll be nice when the three are done. But for now, you know. Yeah, that's news to me. It is. That's uh wow. That's yeah. like that's yeah. like I mean, uh we, we still have a lot of space, but um not as much as I would I would like. So it's kinda like living in a project car, you know? <laughs> it's like your hobby, but it's yeah. also your dwelling. Uh so that's that's something else. Yeah. Well, well the topic to today, it. yeah. yeah. So we're really excited about this topic. We've been excited about this topic for four years. At least I have. Um, or at least, of course, one, at least a week. At least a week. <laughs> Sorry, Look, I, I like this topic regardless of the whether or not we're going to oh, do yeah. a podcast. Yeah, sure. Truth be told, I didn't, know what, I didn't know what Scratch was before Jeff approached me, so I haven't been excited since before I knew about it. So technically, what, two years? Um, and that topic is, without further ado... Scratch, and Scratch is a, I think, baseline, a coding language that uh, is block-based. It is developed by MIT, and it's free to use, and we'll we'll talk some more about its features, but um, it's a really great intro coding language, so. Yeah, and um, it's been around since, I believe, 2000. Oh, let's see. We just had Scratch Seven. Conference 10 two years ago. I think it's been around about 15 years. Uh, I think it came out around 2006 or so. so yeah, been, six or seven. Don't quote it's us. It's been out for, for quite a while. Um, and recently, I think about a year ago, they said they're actually um, breaking... I don't know if it's happened yet, but they're breaking ties with the MIT Media Lab huh. and will... Um, just be part of the scratch foundation but interesting basically what scratch is james already kind of said it's a it's a programming language designed for kids so you get um like a the elements of a typical programming language but something that is really user friendly really uh something that that uses graphics and drag and drop so that kids can just easily access it and jump jump right into it yeah yeah that is that's exactly what it is <laughs> we use it for a lot of our classes <laughs> james um james has designed uh well i mean i helped i guess with one or two a little bit but james has designed uh, about four or five six um curriculum. yeah we're on, we're on five curricula yeah so um you know different topics and and the way that we kind of eventually went is to take scratch and allow for instead of like doing like well this is for scratch level one scratch level two scratch level three um where a lot of kids are going to fall off by level two or fall off by level three instead we just kind of said let's go with different themes and we'll have a bunch of projects at different levels um so we'll have one project and we'll say if you are advanced, then we're going to give you advanced, like an advanced rubric. And if you're a beginner, then you can have a beginner rubric. Um, and that's kind of the way that we're going so far. So if you're looking at our website and you see a scratch class that has different names, then those are just the names of the themes. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see Castles and Dragons, Wild West, Outer Space, Platformer, and Music Maker, right? We also have a Scratch Junior, which is, I guess we could do a separate episode on, but that's like obviously the junior version of Scratch for younger um, kids. Um, it's pre-reading. But uh, yeah, it's it's really exciting. I mean, when I was a public school teacher, uh, I taught Texas history, and they used to use this word differentiation, differentiation all the time, day in, day out, and... I did the best that I possibly could with no kind of technology in the classroom, except they gave us like a microphone for some reason. Like they spent an inordinate amount of money on like a microphone and a 
Promethean board, but they they wouldn't give us laptops, like not even one in our classroom. And That's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy because they promised it and didn't do it. Anyway, if you're a public school teacher, I know you feel me. Um, you know, district promising one thing and then like changing their mind, doing another. And so uh, there are a lot of good ways to differentiate curriculum. Um, but, you know, I was having to design 180 lessons a year, um, different you know, lesson plans, you know, one of our, for a full semester or a full week of camp, and we always design more than, more than we need to, right? So that, so that way no one says, oh, I got to the end of it. I'm done. I, I can stop learning. I can shut my brain off. <laughs> so there's, there's always extra content, but we're yeah. able to well, differentiate and because we have the resources to be able to really, really focus and it's project based. So sometimes you're spending several weeks on a project, making it look, you know, making it look sound and, and function properly. And uh, I think the product yeah, is really say, good. In the early days of Coder Kids, I mean, up until, I don't know, a year or two ago, I think a lot of parents parents would kind of sign up for our classes and they would say um once their kid took the class like oh he's done scratch like what else can he do you know so mm -hmm. he, can he do python now can he because he's done scratch but really like that just meant that they had spent you know 15 or 30 hours in one of our camps like doing scratch projects but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have like explored all there is to explore in scratch and i would i would say not even not even anywhere close in in 15 to 30 hours um you know i think if you're in a full day camp for 30 hours in a week i would still say you're probably wrapping up the week with maybe six seven projects and if you're starting out as a complete beginner your projects probably aren't going to be all that great so that's why i think I don't know. I mean, I guess we can we can probably blame James, blame James for the the theme idea, but I like it for I like it in the sense that you're not really like done. It's just like you completed one of the themes, and then you can go on to another theme. And really, what we're inviting people to do, inviting kids to do, is like just explore Scratch, get to know it, spend time with it, um, and it's not. I think with all of computer programming, it's not really something that you like um, know or don't know. It's like, how comfortable are you with it? How much time have you spent with it? Um, what kinds of projects can you build or can't you build? Um, there's a really a never ending level of complexity with what you could develop um, in, you know, different apps and, and things in the professional world. And with, with scratch there's also no real limit to to what you can explore yeah i mean that's because it's a language right so if you're if you're learning a language you could focus on like okay the the items in the grocery store right and so if, if you're traveling abroad and you need to learn the language and you're like okay you know toilet and and you know grocery store and those are the the terms that you're going to use so that's what you're going to focus on you could go into a religious language or you can go to economic language or political language in there they're kind of like subcategories of the language same thing with coding right you could go well i only want to learn about game design so then you're going to learn about physics and you're going to learn about variables that have to do with score and gravity and anyway it can get complicated pretty quickly but yeah i mean that's that's why you can build scratch class on top of scratch class on top of scratch class i think Again, to your point, Jeff, we've had, I think, two students ever who, like, maxed out Scratch. And, like, there's a third one that got pretty close. One took, like, 12 classes of Scratch. And and he loved it. He, st he still can't get enough. I hope, to, I hope to hire him, like, whenever he's legally old enough. But, uh... <laughs> He's great. And one other uh, student had been working in Scratch 
every day almost for two years straight. And he happened, so he hadn't taken many classes with us. In, in fact, he did not taken any until uh, the coronavirus. And he took he took one scratch class that was advanced, and and uh, he was teaching the instructor some things. So, um, so I, mean, I would say, too, yeah, like, it, it's pretty yeah, rare to I mean, just really, yeah, really max it yeah, out for what even it's worth. Then, I mean. Yeah, even then, I mean, I've seen a lot of kids who have taken a lot of classes who still, um, there's definitely still room to explore. And actually, um, I know, I think we're both in the Scratch, the Teaching with Scratch group. Uh, there's a guy named like Cliff Davies, I think is his name. And his uh, Scratch username is Rock Coder, like R-O-K Coder. And um, he creates like the most insane programs in scratch like he creates like emulators and like i mean just things that must take like hours upon hours um but really incredible stuff and he's you know a grown adult i don't know how old he is probably in his 40s yeah. um but he's an educator and is just like crushing it like he comes out with like once a week or like every other week some kind of like super super advanced new project like um let me look his stuff like up. Beat Mania or, um, you know, kind of the DDR kind of things. But he he creates like, he's created like games where you can, um, you know. Oh, this the, is the nuts. And, yeah, it's it's pretty advanced. I just looked it's up his profile. Yeah. Probably the most advanced um, stuff I've ever seen. Anyway, I think we should dive into our topic. Um, <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah. So... Official um, bullet points. Shout out to Rock Coder. Official bullet points. Yeah, shout out to Rock Coder. We're gonna be we could we could do a show with Rock Coder sometime. He's he's pretty legit. Um but anyway, I wanted to uh just kind of talk about the topic. I guess we never actually I mean we said we were gonna talk about scratch, which we have been yeah. doing so far. But James and I came up with a list of our top five things that we love about scratch. And so um Without further ado, I think we're just going to kind of go point by point and talk about them. And probably we have some aligning points. Probably. So we're just going to talk about them. And once we're kind of out of things, we'll we'll stop. <laughs> so Sounds good. That's the that's the approach. James, you want to kick us off with your? Oh, with your I would love. One? I would love to. So first one. I mean, right off the bat, it's beginner friendly. So yeah. if you've never done coding, do, you're do in high school. Do you want me to tell you if I if I came up with the same one, or do you want me to to wait? You just you just wait till I'm done, then you say ditto on that one if you've okay, all right. Or unless yeah. you want to add Good. something. So yeah, so the fact that it's beginner friendly, you could be in high school, you could be in elementary school, you could be an adult. Um, there's no judgment, and everything's color coded. I mean, so there's there's not much to elaborate on. It's just really beginner friendly. Yeah, so uh, I will exp I will take your comment and uh, <laughs> expand upon it. So, um, you know, I I put great for beginner to advanced. So okay. um, it is great for beginners. Actually, I, I think it's like every instructor that we hire. I swear. Well, if if the instructor is familiar with Scratch. And we'll be like, have you ever used Scratch before? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I, we used Scratch for two weeks at the beginning of my high school computer science class. And it's yeah. just like, yeah, um, obviously, like for us, I would probably advocate for kids to start using Scratch like second grade, third grade. You know, I think it's a great tool for kids to use when they're young. But at the same time, like if you're in in high school, like James was saying, great time to start using Scratch. Um, but also like. Um, I pointed this out in a YouTube video that I made, but if you are 35, all right, I'm 35. So, um, but <laughs> if you're older and you're like, gosh, I really want to learn how to code because I have never, um, you know, I've never done any coding before. And I think that spending a couple of weeks in scratch, spending some time in scratch, like just getting to know it really puts you in the correct frame of mind, the correct mindset to um to dive then into the more advanced 
computer programming languages with syntax and so all of those things yeah i mean i guess i'm not really talking about advanced users i mean i think it's i guess the reason that advanced users would like it is just that it's a lot of fun um for someone like rock coder um it's just a a fun and simple way to kind of manipulate your logic and your coding logic but um but i would say yeah mostly mostly fantastic for beginners and uh, a couple other thoughts that i have along those lines but we'll kind of dive into the next point so we can um so we can make sure that we're covering all the covering all the points yeah definitely so you want me to hit do you want to do you want to do or do you want me to do here i'll do i'll do my next one all right go for it you, you ready for this i am ready all right the next one is uh community so uh, i really okay, love yeah. the community aspect of scratch if you're not familiar with it sorry for those watching on youtube i've got some major glare in my glasses but we'll survive um so scratch has a a great community aspect to it um you know the scratch community is extremely safe it's extremely uh friendly it doesn't allow for any like bad language they monitor for bullying um it's just a really great place for kids to be kids and interact with other kids to like and favorite other people's projects to get feedback on their own projects and even to collaborate i mean a lot of people meet people through scratch and then they they break up large projects into segments and then each each person in the in the group takes a segment and then and then one person who's kind of the team leader will come back and like piece all those parts together to make like an advanced scratch project so yeah um i think there's just elements of the community that are just really healthy for kids in that age group um i you know i think kids these days are using social media and they're using um, tools that sometimes don't have any filter. And so I think it's really great that Scratch allows kids to just be kids and to um, to really like have fun, meet people, be creative, but not have to worry about their online security. Yeah, I honestly don't know how they do that, like the filtering and, and everything, but it's really good. I've never seen... Yeah, like a, like a curse word on the platform ever. Um, so yeah, I will say like there have been a few districts, like school districts, that have blocked Scratch in the past because they'll say like, "Oh, well, it's social media, or it's um, ch- it has like chat, or so I don't know, I don't know why yeah. they block it exactly." Well, one district I mean, said chat, kind of but they don't media. have chat. Yeah, like there's no chat. You can't private message anyone, even. Right. You yeah, can comment no on their profile, which is a is a it's like a public forum. Yeah. But there's no. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I guess I can understand like some to some extent, like oh well, I don't want our kids to be like distracted in class. If you're like maybe you tell the kids to build a project in Scratch, and maybe they're just like play, you know, messing around in the community, but right. I think overall, like 99.9% of the time, it's just like a super healthy thing, super positive thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have that point or not? Yeah, I just called it social connection. Yeah, Yeah. same thing. Yeah, now... Yeah, I mean, there's commenting, liking. I mean, there's yeah. What what else is there? So you can you can follow different. They're called scratchers. So I'm I'm a scratcher, and you can see their latest projects. Um, one thing I think on that is just that you can remix someone else's project. You can see inside their project and look at the code. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, which is neg- a, another positive and negative. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you actually hit my other one, which is kid friendly. And that I would say it's it's more kid friendly than Roblox, on on the scale of things. Um, so it's what it's about better. Minecraft. Yeah, I mean. Did you say it's more kid friendly? Yeah. yeah, it's more kid friendly than I mean, Minecraft I too. One thing, one thing. Although about... Minecraft is like super fine. So. Yeah, yeah. Minecraft 
doesn't require any reading. So actually, like my son hmm. played a little bit of Minecraft. He kind of struggled to figure it out. I think he's definitely a little bit young because he's four. Yeah, I think he's a little bit young for Minecraft, but um, I think that he's definitely too young for Scratch. And the reason for that is um, Scratch just requires reading, right? So it requires like reading, thought, logic a little bit. So with some of these games, like even Roblox, it doesn't really require any any like thought. It's kid friendly in the sense that it's safe, but it's it's challenge it's a little bit more challenging to use than than just playing a game. Yeah, for sure. And we have we definitely have a love for Minecraft, so I can definitely see that coming up in another episode. So Oh yeah. This one's All a right, quick we'll dive one. In. Oh sorry, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, it's free to use. So that's awesome. Right? It's Yeah. You you mentioned the Scratch Foundation earlier, but uh, you know, this is this is legitimately one of those free things that's given to the world that we should probably be paying for and you know um yeah that takes I mean, up server space like i don't know how much server space i've collectively used <laughs> you know but i it is doing real good in the world and there's there's no there's no place to enter credit card information you can't purchase anything even if you want to so it i yeah i like true. that aspect of it it really yeah, is and, just like a community good yeah and um you know, they also have a pretty pretty decent sized development team, and um, they're you know they I, I guess they weren't solely responsible for Scratch Junior, but like I think Scratch Junior falls under the Scratch Foundation, um, and they're releasing like initially they released this as a web version, but then you know we're able to come out with the desktop apps, Chromebook apps, tablet apps. Um, so I mean, Scratch is just super universal now and it, you can use it literally on i think literally any device but you don't have to pay for it so it's pretty incredible i think it is that's a really good point all right well i'll dive in with my next point here um i guess i'll just tackle this one here and that is there are a v variety of project types so um you know it's not just like a, strictly a game maker there are apps out there that are strictly like game based unity a game maker pro or game maker studio um which are also really awesome and really fun to make or really fun to to use for for stuff but one thing that i really like about scratch is that people have taken this um you know, this programming language essentially and are able to make games, make stories, make animations. Um, really just the sky's the limit in terms of what you want to make. I think some of my favorite projects have been like, you know, just the simple like all about me, um, just telling some kind of like unique aspect of your story. Um, and people use it to find a voice, you know. Um, young people these days, it's hard to everybody like wants to be internet famous i guess um but it's it's not easy to to be noticed and i think on scratch you kind of have that avenue to like again it's kid friendly but you can like be yourself and um find a community of scratchers who are like really you know positive about what you um what you're putting out yeah definitely i hadn't thought of that one just the and i will say too, versatility. Like, yeah, like James also in these in the in the curriculum, he uh, he has all these different project types. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean they're built in, right? So Scratch Platformer and Scratch Music Maker kind of hyper focuses on that one kind of style, but all the rest. Uh, Castles and Dragons, Wild West, and Outer Space, 
and probably soon to be others in the future, you know, they will include at least one or two story projects and one or two games. And it's it's not even just reskinning projects. Like the objectives are completely different from course offering to course offering. And we find that you know, even girls and boys tend to like different projects more and less, and it's really interesting to discover that. One example, this is actually was an idea from a student. It's called Barber's Animal Adventure, and she had an idea for a project she was so excited about, and so I stopped whatever I was doing, I listened to her, and I actually thought it was a really good idea too, so I I built it out, and, and then um, she's like, why all these kids are like, why does this project have somebody's name in it? It's like, well, it was her idea. I want to give her credit, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that one was a, you know, a random up game where you, you get all the animals into the barn. So that was pretty fun. Yeah. All right, James. Well, well, uh, I'm, I'm getting close here on my list. I've got a couple other things I can talk about, but, um, do you have any other points that you want to, oh, yeah. that you want to point out? So the feedback loop is tight. What I mean by that is as soon as you lay down the code, you can see it. Like it's so visual and it's so fast and it happens basically instantaneously with some more complicated languages where you're looking at syntax. If you get one thing wrong, it can break the whole thing and I suppose that's true of Scratch, but it's just not as common. So I think that's part of the reason why Scratch is so rewarding and such a good beginner-friendly language is just that you can do something and then you can see it and and it's, it's, it's so immediate. Yeah, like in, if you are coding in certain programming languages that require semicolons or like specific tabbing, and we've done a lot of Python classes, and like, if you get your tabs messed up, then you're gonna, you know, it's it's gonna break the program. And a lot of kids will get tabbing messed up. <laughs> so, um, so a lot of the syntactical things that people worry about when they're thinking about coding, kind of like that aspect is removed to a certain extent. Um, yeah, I mean, because it's drag and drop, you don't really have to worry about like typing errors or anything like that. So you you dive in, and you can within within minutes you can create something. I mean, I remember when I used to teach a lot, um, I would just show the kids like, "Hey, look, I can just add a start button, like when you click on the green flag, and then um, a." Uh, move button and then just a forever repeat and it would just go and then i i would say if on edge bounce so basically what you're creating here is just a cat moving forward for forever and if it hits the edge then it's going to bounce back and forth and the kids would just like that project literally takes like 30 seconds to make if you can find the blocks but the kids were just like, that is hilarious. Like they, I don't know. I just like the kids always just thought that was, that was pretty awesome. But the fact that I made it so easily and so quickly, I think is really the thing that, that stood out and that stands out to the, to the kids. Um, it's just something that they can do on, on day one, they can go home and have a project. Yeah. And if we were doing, if we're doing like a Python class, yeah, I mean, I guess we could also have them go home with a project, but it's a it's a lot more like um, something that we show them like step by step how to do, as opposed to like they're able to figure it out on their own. Yeah, so. it's re yeah, it's really fun to let kids loose on something. Say, hey, you know, here are the basic concepts; these are the principles, and then you can go after it and go at it. And something that is really fun as a teacher is to have students come to you with questions and they're super sincere and they like they really want to know the answer. And you could have told them 
the answer 10 minutes ago and they never would have remembered it. But when they, when students come to you and they really want to know, then they don't forget that stuff. So I really, philosophically, I think it's a better way to learn. And a lot of the stuff they can figure out on, on their own. Um, we don't, we don't leave them without help. We have, you know, an eight to one student teacher ratio. So we always have enough instructors to answer questions and make sure everyone needs help. And, you know, we'll stay after class if needed to, to make sure that everybody, you know, is progressing, but it is, um, it's so much fun, so much fun to see as a teacher. It's so rewarding. I only have one more point, Jeff. All right, we'll go ahead and and dive in. I actually had written that one down, like that it's so easy to start. So go ahead and give me your last one. Just that you can learn real coding concepts. You touched on this earlier, but some of the concepts are sequential logic, conditional statements. I hope this wasn't your last point, but the, yeah, it's variables. Yeah. yeah. So when Jeff is talking um, about, Hey, spend a couple of weeks in scratch. If you're 35, then yeah, we're not kidding. Like it's not just fun and colorful, but you, yeah, learn about variables, learn about lists. You learn about if then statements, if then else statements, for loops, um, as they're called in other languages, um, repeats, coordinates, math, all sorts of stuff. And the sky's the limit yeah. with how variables can interact with variables and you can create cool things like gravity. So, yeah, I think that, um, it's really easy to shortchange it just based on the colors and stuff. Oh um, yeah. It's super based bright. On the fact that it's like <laughs> graphical and, and, uh, it has, it has colors and whatnot, but, um, yeah, and like computer programmers will ask me like, oh, well, what language is Scratch based in? And the interesting thing is that it's really not like it is based in like it's it's just like conceptually based as a computer. Like you could say that it is its own language. Actually, I made like a blog post and a video about this, but basically you know, real computer programmers are probably going to give you a hard time about this, like whether or not Scratch is a legit computer programming language. But I mean, essentially what a computer programming language is doing is it is communicating with a computer so that the computer understands in its own, in its own system of, of numbers, of zeros and ones, um, what you want it to do. And that, I mean, that's just what a computer language does. It just speaks to the computer in its own way using, you know, using a compiler. And so um, Scratch is not something that is going to actually communicate directly with like your CPU, with your, you know, with your computer. It's, it's not going to move through a compiler, but it is like a really great and really close simulation of what computer programming is and again, designed for kids. So, um, it is like the most user-friendly, uh, computer programming language that you can use. And again, maybe it's not 100% dead on a coding language, but it is a great simulation and it is super close to what we would consider to be a language so yeah it's kind of a debate it's kind of a debate but ultimately it doesn't really matter um great tool it's a great tool yeah that's awesome that's all i have to say about that yeah uh i mean i would like to show the people on youtube maybe just a, a sneak preview of like at least what this thing looks like is it would that would that be okay i don't know in the audio version we can describe uh, what it is What's on what's on the screen? Yeah, so definitely for yeah, you can go ahead and pull it up, James. But for those uh, on YouTube, uh, and and for anyone listening to this podcast, definitely highly recommend um, going to scratch.mit.edu. Just checking it out, checking out the different project types, um, 
and maybe dive in and try to create your own little project. James, what do you want to show them there? Well, it looks like it's flipped though. So, um, I, I see, it looks fine to me. It looks, <laughs> it looks flipped Found backwards on your screen on my oh, zone. Weird. Yeah. I wonder if I, if I click share screen, um, yeah, that's okay. we've got a, we've got a third window now. Let's see. Yeah. Watch stream. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, this is the, well, actually I can just, I can just drag this to the middle. It's going to be better quality. Okay. So this is a tiny hero line. I'm going to full screen this so people can actually see it in the back. So this is a this is a project, you know, really actually one of the more complicated ones just because any project with gravity yeah. is is more complicated. Try not to get stuck on anything. Your goal is to try to get to that star. I've done this a few times, so um, that's that's the first level. Yeah, so we've got multiple levels here. And I do feel bad for anyone listening to this podcast, but this one you have. Uh, imagine you're a, a lion, very simple platformer. You're in space, and and uh, you just eaten a space zebra, oh. and now you're in the Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> who who created this game? Oh, I did. Just one of the students. No, I did. Oh, you created this? Yeah, yeah. It's um, pretty good. It's well, pretty it was good. it was yeah, the example. I've seen a bunch of. Okay. I've seen there a we bunch go. Of platformers kind of like this, but this is this one's pretty good. So. So. Yeah, that's it. That's the end right there. Um. So that's what the the play area looks like. You can put instructions here. Typically, there are instructions. If you look on the inside of a project, you'll have. A left, you, you'll have an area on the left side, and that is dedicated to the library. You can just scroll up and down that, or you can click on these little bright colored circles. For some reason, the color orange is just way overused. <laughs> like orange and yellow orange. I don't That's know. True. Why. Yeah, there's but, like uh, <laughs> a yellow, an orange, and a dark orange. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a little but, much. But yeah, you can you can definitely tell tell them apart in the in the actual program itself yeah and so then i guess i'll just describe it a little bit here james but um you the essentially work have a you. large viewer screen yeah work area i mean i think the left side is pretty small you got all the blocks that you could potentially use midsection is your work area where you build all your code um typically you're going to start that with some kind of event i guess you always have to start with some kind of event mm -hmm. um so you'll you'll start it with an event at the top followed by any amount of code that you want below it. And then on the right side of the screen, you'll have your viewer window and all the different sprites. Sprites meaning like different actionable characters inside of the program. And um, so there's just a lot that you can that you can build here because there's really like limitless amounts of sprites that you can build. Um, limitless amounts of backdrops and so you can create like multi-level games that are pretty pretty intense you can also as james is showing right now um do a lot of like costume design character design and so for the different sprites you can um you can like design different ones to be, di be different and look different um and so a lot of our students who are more into art i mean i guess that's one thing we didn't really dive into much but i'm surprised we did a coding it. platform i mean it's a great coding platform but but also for people who love art and animation it's really really great um platform you can connect like a like a bamboo tablet to it and really draw some some pretty intense um pretty intense animations yeah so Frame frame by frame, um, or you can have looks effects or, or a bunch of stuff. You can also include sounds, which you know we're not going to bother you with because we're already talking. But the you know any you can record your voice, you can upload MP3s, you can do all sorts of stuff. You're not going to get copyright striked because nothing is for profit on Scratch. So you can use. Maybe don't call me on that. 
copyrighted music. Anyway. Um, oh, can you use copyrighted music? I mean, I've certainly heard of copyrighted music. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know their enforcement I, level. I, um, I don't know the uh, the copyrights. official policy. I mean, I, I've seen... I mean, people upload everything. I, I think... I think studios and, and yeah. things are fine with it just because no one's making money. I think studios are just mad when someone's making money off of something that they created and there's no kind of repercussion. So Yeah. Yeah. Regardless. I mean, yeah. I mean, regardless whether you do or not, um, on the project page, um, this notes and credits place should be filled out for every project, right? You learn something from somebody somewhere down the road and so giving them credit um, is always a, a good idea, especially if you remix a project or, um, for instance, take a gravity variable like this one from another project. It's uh, definitely a good idea to to credit them. I'm going to stop the screen sharing, but uh, that was... Well, I guess it, it's about time to, to go ahead and um, start wrapping up okay today um but as you can tell we're very big fans of scratch um i've never met anyone who likes scratch more than james <laughs> i don't know i feel like griff patch is gonna be rock coder yeah rock uh, coder yeah i'm excited about a lot of things he's definitely a big a very big scratch fan but yeah I mean, well, the other thing, too, is that, um, yeah, sorry to keep dragging this on, but I think that kids have so much free time to just, like, do stuff like this. You know, it's awesome. So, like, when you're a kid and you want to, like, learn how to skateboard or speak a foreign language, like, you just have, or play the piano, like, you just have the time to, to dedicate to it. And, you know, I know that there's competing priorities for kids. You, as a parent listening to this, like, you probably have your kid in different activities and whatnot, not to mention, like, public school. But um, they just have the time for it. So, like, me as an, as an adult, like, I've created a few pretty complicated Scratch programs, and James has as well. But it's nothing compared to what kids can do if they really like the platform and like really dedicate themselves to it. Um, just because kids are kids and they have a lot of free time, a lot of like focused energy. So, yeah. Yeah. On things that are engaging. Right. And so this, this is one of those things that's educational and fun and engaging. It's, it's one of yeah. those few things that kind of bridges the gap. Which I guess is one of the inspirations behind starting Coder Kids in the first place is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of activities out there for different types of kids. There's sports and there's chess and there's um, all sorts of different things that, that your child can do. And um, we certainly encourage all those different activities. But I think that there was a there's a place missing for kids who are um, you know, who are kind of more into gaming or more into maybe academics and want to be able to like be creative and create this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, again, Scratch just opens that door for them like 100% and gives them an easy way to access coding that wasn't available before. So it's pretty cool. All right, well, with that, we'll go ahead and... Rack I have up. one more thing, just just uno mas. Go ahead. Go and that ahead, is sir. that I think the primary reason I like Scratch is because I got to tell this story. But like I, I delivered newspapers when I was twelve, and and I got up every morning and I you know scraped together my nickels uh, back when they were accepted at Walmart, and we. Um, with my friend, we bought a computer programming program. It was for adults, and uh, it was it was just so difficult. We gave up. So I literally wanted Scratch when I was twelve. When I was, you know, man, I'm an American. I was working when I was twelve, but <laughs> but 
<laughs> I mean, I would have loved it. And so I finally discovered this thing. And so I'm like a missionary because I I feel like, I don't know. I don't know how things would have been different, but I think certainly my logic would have been better, just the way I think about problems and in the way I would might have been able to to be more productive yeah. with my Excuse time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's well, that was the last thing. That was well, the last thing. Well, it's interesting along the along those lines, you know, like you said, I wonder how things would have been different. You know, um yeah. constantly talk about how there's a shortage of computer programmers in the United States. And I just think it's interesting how the tools are ready, the tools are at their disposal for these kids these days. If if that's kind of what they're inclined toward, I think we're probably going to see a bigger surge in people who are getting into tech jobs and especially coding uh, within the next you know, 20 years because I'm like you. You know, when I was a kid, I mean, I took high school computer programming. It was C++, and I enjoyed it a lot, created some really cool stuff, but ultimately felt like it was just a little bit out of reach for me and like my my cognitive abilities at the time and so i'm another person who would have really benefited from scratch um because for me i started doing computer programming in like 10th or 11th grade and i think if i had started back in like sixth grade seventh grade eighth grade or maybe even younger then when I confronted those big challenges, I wouldn't have had that cognitive, um, you know, disconnect that ultimately caused me to say like, Oh, this isn't really for me. So we hope that you will consider, um, checking out, checking out our coder kids classes, um, and see if maybe one of these classes is a good fit for your child so that they can start that journey that I guess we didn't get to <laughs> when we were kids, but here we are now. So, we we made it uh, eventually. Yeah, we and that's we've that's made the it. good that's the made that's the the, the good ending on the story. Well, yeah, thanks so much for spending the time listening to us. It's a it's a bunch of fun. I really enjoy these. So I assume I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm. All right, wave goodbye, Jeff. There. <laughs>